why we didn't follow our heart and I had to be a yes, yes boy or yes girl and saying yes to my dad and just being afraid or wanting to get his approval and not really doing what I love to do or you know, these days things are changing a lot for younger generation, but we understand, we know what I'm talking about. Younger generation seems like they're understanding, following the heart. They understand spirituality and incorporate spirituality a lot more into their lives. They have their own challenges, but a lot of this stuff, they already, they starting to figure out. They have their own way of confusion and uh, challenges that they have, but certain things that maybe it took me 30 years to understand, they already know it or they get to it very quickly. When I sat in front of Master Punjaji and finally encountered this giant, this Buddha, this beautiful man, my Sat Guru, my teacher. And in just the first few days, I realized that this man has something that I want because he was very still. He was silent, you know, they, they didn't have a busy mind. You can tell when people have a busy mind. And he was very present here, really here. Of course, when I met him, he had already been enlightened for 50 years. When I met him, he was 80, 80 years old. He came to enlightenment, I think, in his early 30s, 31, 32, or whatever. And uh, so he had already been settled into this space of the self for 50 years. But it was very clear to, to me as a boy and spiritually very immature, when I encountered him, I, you know, I, maybe I thought I knew, but I didn't know anything. I was ignorant. So I come across this man and it's like, it kind of felt like you're sitting at the foothills of Himalaya. You're sitting here and you look like, and Mount Everest is in front of you. You're sitting in front of Mount Everest. You have seen these huge statues of Buddha. I don't know where they're in Burma or they're in Bhutan or Thailand or in India, they have these huge statues of Shiva and you're just sitting in front of it in meditation and it's huge, it's a giant. And that's how it was sitting in front of this man being at his presence. And uh, the clarity, the space that would open up. And it was very clear to me, even at that stage of knowing very little, that this, this man is free. He has come to something very valuable. This man does not answer to anybody. He is the boss. No one can scare him or question him. He can question everybody, 
but no one can question him. He was, that's the feeling I got from him. Like he's free. He freed himself. And I wanted that. So I decided that I'm just going to go on this quest till I get to, to this wisdom, this intelligence. So I spent the rest of my life in search of freedom. Because everything else, it wasn't that. I thought it would be, but it wasn't. Everything else comes with an attachment. It comes with fear, worry, anxiety, fear of death, fear of getting old, fear of getting sick, fear of losing. You lose your beauty, you lose your arm, you lose your partner, you lose your assets, everything. What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to the world? Blah, 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 blah. The list goes on and on and on. It's like a never ending list. So you cannot fulfill and satisfy that list in this, in this life. It's impossible. The most famous or uh, rich people or wealthy people are the most paranoid people on the planet. They're afraid. I lived in Los Angeles. I know Hollywood. I know the actors, the actresses. They're afraid of everything. They're always in fear. We see them on the stage that they're glorious and powerful, wonderful, beautiful. But in real life, they're afraid of everything. And to some certain point, they have the right to be because a lot of people want things from them. They're stalking them. They're following them everywhere. They're afraid maybe their kids get kidnapped. Maybe you find their home and you break into their home. Um, they really don't want to shake hands with people. They don't want to get close to people. They have to have bodyguards all the time. They have to leave and from the back door in hiding. And they're famous. They have a lot of money. They want it. But I don't want that life. I don't find it fine, fun. But besides that, it's the inner freedom that they don't have. So how many actors, actresses, famous people, rock stars, singers, artists, we find out they committed suicide from depression. They didn't feel like they were good enough. They were loved enough. They didn't feel like they accomplished so it doesn't matter how much money you got or what you look like. You're just not free. So real freedom is different. It's the inner freedom. That's, that's where you come to the you enter into the kingdom of heaven by discovering inner freedom you have found a way to go beyond your wicked mind to go beyond this mind that takes you into all these peaks and valleys and hidden places of darkness.